Welcome to Behind the Production July edition here, the show that takes you behind the scenes of some of the top church production teams across the country to show you the ins and the outs, and most importantly, the why behind what they do and what we do as ministry techs. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Chris Pyron, and I am joined today by Mr. Jordan McMillian. And Jordan and I are part of the team here at E2I Design. Uh, that video that we just rolled right before we came on, uh, that tagline of uniquely you, you know, our, our passion here at E2I is to help you tell your story, a story that is actually uniquely to you. Uh, but we, we really love bringing together the worship community to add value and share ideas together. And we love getting to do events just like this one. Uh, it's one of the highlights of, of, of our month when we get to do these things. Uh, and today we've got so much value on deck and I am super, super excited uh, to see what our guest has in store here. Jordan, uh, why don't you tell everybody what we've got going on today? Yeah, so uh, so today we are uh, we are excited. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great, uh, great little segment here. Um, we are joined by Adam Hobson at Church of the Highlands, uh, broadcast engineer and and uh, and just uh, a great friend of ours. So Adam, thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate you. Absolutely, it's an honor. So glad to be a part. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, for those of you who don't know uh, Church of the Highlands, um, just a mega influential church. Um, a lot of people are, are using Church of the Highlands as, you know, a guidepost to say, cool, this is, you know, this is a way that we can, uh, you know, they're using technology and communicating, delivering the message in a way that, you know, that that's what we could be someday or, or you know, we could we could operate to that level. But if anybody knows Church of the Highlands um, staff members and 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 just the group and team there, um, all of them are kind of cut from the same cloth in, in terms of saying, you know, you've got to make it yours. You have to have a reason behind what you do. You can't just say, well, they're doing that, so I want to do it. Um, and uh, they're very, very ministry driven, and we're just very, very happy um, to, to, to be such close friends with them. Um, 25 campuses, right, Adam? Right. 25 campuses. Yeah, it's, it's um, that's awesome what God has done over the last, you know, several years. I mean, it's, it's been awesome to say what God's done since the beginning, but over the last, you know, five plus years, it's just been crazy how things have been growing. So, yeah, that's, that's just, that's awesome. Um, you guys are, you know, you guys are using, uh, a lot of different technology um, as it as it pertains to lighting and audio and video and things like this and um, obviously you know with you being uh, you know your wheelhouse being in broadcast um, you know uh, you're you're overlooking a lot of the video side of things and everything like that and this segment today um, is is a hot topic um, it's uh, surrounding around LED walls uh, LED walls uh, media servers all the things that make that happen right um and not just 
not just uh, what to put on the stage and, and do, um, you know, in terms of uh, having an LED wall period, but how to utilize it and, and create a dynamic worship experience. Um, and that's something that sometimes can be missed because, uh, and, and, you know, we, we see it all the time. I'm sure you hear it all the time, Adam, that it's like, well, the next thing we want to do is an LED wall, right? Um, yeah, that's the thing right and, now for sure. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, you know, the first question from us is great. Why and how are you going to use it? What, you know, what's going to drive it all the things. And so I think having a segment like this is going to be super, super beneficial to a lot of people and add value to um, if they're looking at making that next step into whether it be LED wall or projection or, you know, if they're on the fence between the two or whatever, um, to just have some clarity. Right. And I think uh, I think that's why, you know, we, we decided to bring you guys on, because um, when it comes to an LED wall, you you've got uh you've got something there, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, you know, we, for a long time we didn't know, you know, so like it, it yeah. just kind of became part of the vision that um, we wanted to leave physical sets. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. you know, we really, we, we built a lot of physical sets in, in our day, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's do this. Um, let's go into, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about you and your role at Highlands, what you kind of do, what you operate, what you kind of oversee. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll dive into the fun stuff here. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So I've been around Highlands about 10 years now. Um, I, I volunteered for about two and I've been on full staff, full-time staff since uh, spring of 2012. So um, it's, it's been an you know, honor of honor of my life. Honestly, um, I have, uh, one one daughter just turned a year old, married to a beautiful uh, wife named Cassidy. Um, just being a part of Highlands is just really um, the honor of, of my life. You know, I dreamed my entire life of getting uh, to do what I get to do here uh, on a regular basis. Um, I'm part of a very talented team who oversees the broadcast portion of Highlands, um, from primarily from a video standpoint, a video and lighting. Um, but but my, my title is broadcast engineer, and anyone that's worked for a church or any organization for that matter those titles you know don't really mean a whole lot but um I, you know i help oversee the video of the main campus um we pretty much oversee um you know from what goes through the lens to what makes it to the campus so our we have a incredibly talented team that you know oversees that whole process um, and then you know once once the feeds to the campuses we hand it off to other teams to you know locally to manage that um but yeah it's, it's awesome uh uh, when we decided in 2016, they were, you know, we're interested in LED. Um, we started doing rentals and then um, I, I kind of became the LED guy, I guess. I don't really know how that worked, but um, then we, we purchased our wall. Um, you know, I, I became the LED guy. So it's, it's been fun to learn. Um, you know, I, I tell people, hey, this is how we do it. We made some of this stuff up. I'm not sure if it's accurate or the way everyone else does it, but it works for us. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been awesome. Yeah, that's 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 really cool. So, I want to I want to kind of dive into uh, something here because, you know, uh, the why right behind right. you guys moving to LED wall technology, um, you've kind of already answered it, right? It's uh, you guys were doing a lot of physical sets, doing that probably. You know, what was the, um, you know, what was the frequency of those set changes? Was it every few months or every series? It what did that look like? As every series. Okay. So it could it could have been a set that lasted you know two or three weeks, or it could have been a set that lasted a couple of months, um, and then we, we kind of transitioned from that to doing uh, LED rentals just for special events. Okay. And then we we saw that we saw the world was going um, LED, and then you know the physical sets aren't cheap, you know. So if you add all those up, you know, and then the the amount of manpower that it takes to pull all those physical sets off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, absolutely. So yeah, it, we did a lot of rentals. So we started renting you know Christmas, Easter women's conference, special events, you know, and um, we, we kind of got our, got our feet wet a little with rentals. And we kind of sure. saw that was the way the, the industry was going, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. So now now that you have LED, you know, an LED wall, um, you know, you've got, you've got almost like the versatility to be able to create those physical set pieces right. um, digitally, right? I mean, that's, right. that, that's kind of the, that's kind of the push behind it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and we could, we'll probably get into, I think a little later, but our, our team here that, that generates our content is just incredibly talented. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you see, um, looks real, 
um, because they use Cinema 4D to create lighting on the on the 2D you know images that we have. So yeah, that's, if you see that's... any of our stuff or our, our speaking shots, generally, like we want the the flexibility of LED, but we also still liked the old school set look, so that it didn't look so 2D, like kind of green yeah. screen. So you know they still spend a lot of time and effort to try to make um, that that art that we use for any time someone's talking on stage to look as real as possible. Yeah, that's that's legit. I mean, it's uh, I think one of the things that brings a, a dynamic experience is, is kind of that like you're in it, right? Like right. if you, I mean, you guys, uh, your your mission is to bring the congregation into what's happening on stage. And so if they literally feel like they're in in that atmosphere, in that environment, like that's, that's the goal. Right. So right. that's, uh, that's, that's really cool, man. Um, I know, um, I know what you guys have on the stage and I don't want to park on products or anything like that. Right. Um, yeah. but, um, but I know that you guys are using a row video wall. Um, right. is there any reason in particular that you chose the row led wall over, over another one uh, based on your, you know, your needs at the time of, of purchase? Like what, what kind of drew you to that sort of, uh, you know, to that product? Right. Yeah. So we um, basically, we, we were doing a lot of rentals in 2016. So then fall of 16, we decided, Hey, this is the direction we want to go. So we did a, a long-term rental um, with, with just, you know, a, a production company that we have a relationship with. And then we spent pretty much from, you know, the, the whole fall of 16 just demoing our room. So um, I, at this point, you know, we may or may not have chose the same product. You know, I, like you said, the product is, you know, there's so many variables, right? So our number one was on-camera performance. Um, there's so many more people that watch what we do through ca our camera lenses than any than the people in person, right? Um, yep. So the, the number of people that see what we do in person is so small compared to the impact that we have digitally. Um, so our number one was just ca on camera performance, you know. Um, and then part of the demo process is everyone who was interested in selling, you know, any wall we were interested in buying, we actually got a small batch shipped to Grants Mill, our Grantsville campus. So we tested it on our stage with our lighting, with our cameras. Um, and then, you know, there were people that you know, really weren't interested in that. So we really weren't interested in purchasing, you know. And then, um, so I guess number one was on camera performance. Number two was just how it was built and how it was serviced. So Roe at the time, um, like I said, this was 2017. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're still super happy with it. But at the time, the way it connected, um, all the accessories that they that they provided, um, just really were, you know, way far above the competition. So that, that's sure. kind of why we ended up where we did. And obviously you're paying a premium for road. It's not, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a lower end product, which, you know, we understood, but you know, part of our vision is we change it four to five times a year. So everything on our stage is on press and motors. There's the only thing that's permanent on our stage is our power disconnects. Sure. Past that it's all through, you know, PDs and trusted motors. And, and part of one of the things that we wanted was to be able to quickly, you know, in two to three days, basically strike it, rebuild it. And sure. um, the, the magnet system with road just really, really stood far above everyone else. Um, and then yeah. a, a, a side to that is just the service. So, you know, we, we really felt confident with, you know, the, the in us support with row. Um, so yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, at, at this point, uh, I haven't done any led demos cause we're not really in the market right now, but it's still, I mean, I would, we would do it again. You know, it's, it was all, it's been yeah. awesome. Yeah. I think one of the things that stands out about, you know, that product is just the fact that, you know, uh, in terms of setting it up, taking it down, reconfiguring, setting it back up, things like this, you know, it does, it, they do make it very easy to do so. So, you, you know, you really um, can't do it wrong with the magnets. Like there's no, uh, there's really no way to put a gap in it. It's, right, it's, right. It, it is what it is, you know, so, yeah, and it, it's, is, it's held up, you know, we're not, a, we're not a renting, rental touring. So it's not been on the road. Um, you know, it's, it's lived in a pretty amazingly great air conditioned environment. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have a lot of volunteers that help us too. So um, the, the whole like finding the gaps and, you know, uh, with a lot of other manufacturers where you have to really f have someone on the front, making sure everything's lined up before you lock it in, you know, that just doesn't exist. So, Sure, sure. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. And it's always good to like, in terms of needing to get it up, you know, probably between Sunday and, and Saturday. Right. 
or, or well, Sunday. We, uh, we do a lot of like, like we have a Thursday night. We call it in, we call it development. It's where we train all of our uh, volunteers for production and worship. Yep. And uh, so, like we pretty much have like a Sunday night through Thursday morning timeline typically. Okay. And yeah. Sometimes we have a Wednesday event. So sometimes it's like Sunday to Wednesday. Um, sure. So, you know, we're talking about pulling every table out and you know redoing it all in a matter of three to four days, which the touring guys would laugh at us, right? Um, for <laughs> having that, that long of a load in, you know? But uh, we, well, we, we, we do it ourselves, right? It's a lot, a lot for your hands. So, no, it's, and it's legit. And you guys use a bunch of volunteers. I mean, you guys right. have you know, your staff and stuff like that. But I know that, I mean, I see it on your guys' Instagram, um, you know, the the Highlands production Instagram, like we're kind of like walking with you through a, a, a set redesign, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. We, people, we, were, we were kind of shocked with how many people are interested in that, you know? So it's, it's there's a lot of people up. interested in that. Yeah. 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 I mean, you guys do it, you do it really well. And so, and, and, and uh, the full transparency and broadcasting that too says a lot right. as well. You know, it's not just like down one second and then up three days later. You kind of take us right. through the process and everything like that. So that's that's really cool. So I want to actually um, I'm going to dive into something uh, a little quicker than uh, otherwise. But so three days or so, right? In in terms of uh, in terms of a teardown reconfiguration max, three days max, right? Um, and set back up content running on it. Talk to me a little bit about what the beginning process is. So, you know, obviously there's a uh, a new series coming up or something like that. I'm speaking hypothetically here, right. new series coming up. So you guys get your team together. You say, cool, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna strike the stage and re you know reconfigure, re redesign it. So right. I know it goes through a design phase. I know it goes through a planning. You know, a, a deployment. And then, you know, ultimately in executing, like getting it, getting the content up and running, making the graphics, doing things like that. So through that kind of whole process, what does that look like for, for Highlands? Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, Brian Worcester, who's our uh, experience, experience coordinator, um, he pretty much comes up with the, 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 the design. So um, he numbers them like we're, we're working through now one for the fall. And I think uh, he just numbers them LED number right so i think we're on like 70 something at this point so he'll usually have two or three we'll look through them um you know he kellen who oversees kind of our entire worship experience from a creative standpoint looks through them is like ah, i don't think that one really fits the like you know the, the thing whatever it may be so christmas or we usually change it for our women's conference it's pretty big um so we kind of start with that like a, an idea draw he draws it in vector works then he sends it over to me and um, most of the time we can make it work, right? So um, from a rigging perspective, from a pixel map perspective, um, you know, uh, so, so it basically starts with, you know, a concept Brian makes, he sends it to us, we go through it from like, we go through a structural engineer to make sure that the room can hold it. Um, and then we have a, an awesome team of, of guys that oversee all the rigging. And then um, we still send it off to a third party to, to certify the load of the room. Sure. Then we hire out the only part portion, portion we really hire out is the structural engineer and then the rigging. So um, we hire riggers to come in and rig it um, that professionally rig in Birmingham and, you know, in all of our uh, concert areas here in Birmingham. Yep. Um, so then once once we kind of get all that loaded up, you know, it, it, that can be a month to two month process, you know, just to kind of make sure we have everything in line. And then a lot of times, like for the current one that we, we have, we built a couple of little small roofs. It's like we had to order a ton of hardware and, you know, stuff like that. Sure. But for the most part, you know, Brian creates a concept, designs it. Um, we kind of go through it, poke holes in it technically to make sure it works. Um, and then, um, yeah, it, then we get the team together and Sunday night, load it out and and and, and pull it off. You know, it's, it, it's pretty, it's pre we, we've got a pretty, pretty down to, to a pretty simple process at this point. Yeah, no, that's. It's good because, uh, you know, it's good to hear all of that because right. it, it's it's easy to say, oh, check out that new, you know, Highlands look or, or check out the new LED look or whatever. Um, it's easy to just look on Instagram or Facebook or whatever and, and see it. Um, right. But I think the important thing and why behind the production quite literally exists uh, is because we want to see 
you know, we we want to know what happens. You know, what right. happens behind well, what the scenes? What they started out is that like we we create a pixel map in OmniGraffle, like a two D map that, and we have to recreate everything. So like every oh, single yeah, look, yeah. walk in, walk out, message look, offerings, like anything that goes on screen for the entire service, the creative team has to completely re redo. Sure. Um, so like our, our pre, we call it the pre roll. It's the first. It's the five minutes prior to the service we play before every service. I mean that is an incredibly huge After Effects file with hundreds of assets that has sure. to be recreated every for you know every set design. So. Um, but yeah, I pretty much basically take what he does in Vectorworks, make it 2D to kind of work with pixels, and then uh, in OmniGraphle, if, if people have, haven't heard of it, you should check it out. It's just super simple um, pixel manipulation. You can use, a lot of people use Photoshop. OmniGraphle just seems to be easier. And then I usually will uh, create, you know, pretty much one-to-one -one pixel wise. Um, because, you know, if you create something that has like a diagonal in it and we've got breaks in the wall, like you want it to kind of look as if it's one canvas, even though it's not, you know, one single canvas. Sure. Um, but then I, I export that with a P, uh, into a PSD and, send it, and we just have a Slack channel and um, usually try to get that to those guys like a month or so, maybe a month and a half in advance, at, at least something rough. But a lot of times, I say a lot of times, there's there have been times where like what, it didn't quite work on, on the, on paper, we had to maybe like trim something here, add a little here. So, you know, we might make a revision or two, but for sure, the most sure. part, they have that um, pixel map a month, a month or two ahead. Cause that's a lot of yeah. render time. You know? For sure. Yeah. Especially with, you know, after effects files and things like that. Right. I mean, I'm sure the, I'm sure the servers and the, you know, the hardware is, is, is beefy to handle it, but yeah, I mean, it takes, right. it takes time, you know, especially with, uh, we, uh, I mean, we're we're all we're all kind of from the same. Uh, I'll say cut from the same cloth again. But you know, we we do something and then it goes out and then it's a revision, and then we change it and it goes out and then it's a revision. It's like right. at we're what point can like, we start sending screenshots? Right. <laughs> we're in the like, you know, our stage size doesn't change. Right. We can only cram. We can only go thirty-two panels wide. And then we okay. might have a couple of mid stage. So like our our rasters are about the same size, you know. And so we're in that like about seven thousand by twenty five hundred is a kind of the ballpark that we play in. Sometimes it's skinnier, but it really can't be wider than our stage, you know, because of the physical sure. size of the panels. So yeah, that's great. Funny story though, Brian in the beginning had a the wrong size LED. So our 500 millimeter square, he had it as a little bit bigger size in Vectorworks. So the first like two set designs we did after we purchased LED, he would get in there and I was like, Brian, this doesn't fit on the stage. And he's like, it does. I was like, Brian, it does not fit. And so like the designs would be 34 panels wide when we can only actually do 32 panels wide. So kind of funny, funny side story physics and stuff, right? We can only cram so many panels into real space, even though yeah, they all fit on the screen. Like the way we a couple of set would. designs in a row. We had rented a, a panel that was a little funky size. It was like a little wider than, or a little narrower than 500 millimeters. And it, the math was like, yeah, we can put 34 wide. And I was like, but this doesn't work. You know, so <laughs> it, I think it took two for us to kind of realize, you know, yeah, funny size. Yeah. So obviously you know, having a, having the wall the right size it matters right um yeah. so you you talked a little bit about the content creation process and with the raster size you just gave me i just did the math real quick that's 17.5 million pixels that you guys are yeah. driving right now yeah how are you how are you driving that what's the what's the back end look like on that what's the what's the yeah media so that? right so that as far as the media server goes i mean it's it's pushing that many pixels right a, a lot of that can be blank space because we try to build it one to one in, in a way right so that it kind of it all looks one-to-one you know, -one. so we use resolume arena um you know there's a lot of great things you can use um depending on your application i don't think resolume is the best for all applications but um you know, we went through a process we had a hippo for a while um that was it was it was it was good um it just wasn't great for our application when it came to you know last minute content and the encoding process we, we kind of tried to force a hardware solution in that just didn't really fit so um, we use resolume arena um seven 
which is uh, we actually use Resident Marine Six. We ha we have seven. We just haven't upgraded it yet. Um, with just a custom built PC media server, we do a primary and a backup. Run them in tandem. They're um they're triggered via ArcNet from the Grand MA. So they a big deal for us is is redundancy. So we we use a Spider X80 as kind of it between media servers and LED processing. So we can quickly, you know, have an A B solution, which we use more than people have any idea, um, with the primary and backup. If we have a you know weird Windows issue, we we can just go to the backup, and they're perfectly pixel mapped, you know, on top of each other. So you know, no one would you can go between A and B all day, and you can't see them. And it matches um, them perfectly. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, and that's you know potentially unnecessary depending on the application, but for us. Like I said earlier, so many people see what we do through the lens of the camera, and we don't want, you know, Pastor Chris's 1130 to be the one that he feels, you know, the one that we need to archive and keep forever and resolume quit or, you know, fill in the blank, whatever right. program you're using, you know, because computers are computers. Um, yep. So, you know, we just have a, you know, what we just, that's kind of a thing. So we, we built a system around redundancy, so. So we use a Resident Arena, I guess to recap, Resident Arena uh, on a primary um, custom-built PC. At the time, um, we couldn't really get the Mac that we wanted. We really didn't want to go iMac Pro because of the dongles and the all the things. Um, but we are all Mac other than the PC. Uh, if we did it today, we would probably buy the new Mac Pro rack-mounted with the PCIe stuff because um, we drive multiple. So like for our pre-roll, the first five minutes of every service, um, we have a, a 16 by nine video that's alpha, that's alpha channel um, with the full raster. So we're actually, the media server is doing, you know, a 1080 output on top of that big, you know, almost. Oh, on top AK of the full output. map. Oh, yeah. okay. Gotcha. Just gotcha. cause we, cause what goes to the, like IMAG and the web is the same video. It's just formatted differently, mm -hmm. same music and all that. Um, so we needed something to be able to do SDI out needed, you know, we wanted to come HDMI or display port straight out of the computer. So anyways, that's why we went PC. Um, it's been great. You know, it's cheaper than Mac, but um, just the, our workflow is so Mac based as far as like file sharing and all that. And we have it set up and it's fine. It's been great. But um, you know, if we did it today, we'd probably do it a little differently. Sure. Okay, great. But I guess I, I, I'll summarize it all software for us just works better um, as far you know we get a lot of revisions for content and have to like the process to like re-encode it all it's it, just software fits our fits our mold you know if, if this tour and we did the same show every night for 300 nights in a row we'd probably go hardware you know but for us and our workflow software just works um, we, we, we looked at PVP and there's a lot of PVP does a lot of great things um, at the time, um, Resolume just really, uh, they gave us a better deal. We need, we wanted to buy uh, Resolume for 20 plus campuses. And um, yeah, they just, they were really, really gave us an awesome deal and gave us some discounted licensing. And they've really been awesome to work with. Um, so many things, so many things they didn't have to do for us, they have done for us. Um, so yeah, I would, I'd, I'd suggest it. It may or may not work for your application though, um, but for us, it's just been awesome. That's great. Yeah. And it seems like everything you guys do, especially at Grant's Mill, is built around all the ultimate flexibility because of you yeah. know, how frequently stuff changes. You know, I've, I've seen that from walking backstage, like you mentioned earlier. The right. only thing that's stuck is the PDs. Everything else right. is on wheels and can move and go wherever you need it to. So I yeah, totally see that. Of, you know, we've built it around the system here. And, you know, a lot, of, a lot of stuff we get is, you know, a week in advance, but sometimes there's a, a thing that needs to be, we get it during worship and we need to be able to drag it in and load it and not, you know, that, that for us, like, especially Christmas, Easter, you know, doing rehearsals, we do a rehearsal. They're like, Oh, we don't like this portion. You know, we looked at D3. I know it's like the thing now. Um, but for us, we really wanted to have something that worked for Grand Mill that we could also scale out to every single campus. Um, so, you know, we have campuses with led that are that smaller. So we can just, Cross the board, say Resolume works for a single screen campus. We have some triple screen campuses. We have LED campuses. For us, it just scaled really well. And, you know, it's it's complicated kind of for volunteers. Took a little, you know, it's it a little bit of a learning curve. But I, th I think everybody would say that it's been pretty good so far. So. 
Cool. Cool. We're not married to anything though, really. I mean, we're married to the vision Uh of the church, but other than that, I mean, the process is something we're always trying to figure out, you know, what can we do? Sure. You know, from a pricing standpoint, user standpoint, you know, Resolim is just it for us. So that's awesome. That's great. So one question I had, and we we chatted about this earlier before we actually uh, kicked off the live stream here. Uh, you shared some pictures with me uh, before we started that I want to share with everybody else. Because um, one yes, of the sir. things that you guys do really well that I love is it's not just an LED screen, right? It is used right. as scenic element. It's used in these really great and creative ways. Talk to me a little bit about the, you know, so we had uh, Griff and some of the guys from the lighting team on a few months ago. Uh, talk to me about the working with them. Cause I asked you specifically uh, in this picture about what I see as the GLPX four bars over the stage. And you had mentioned that that even those are pixel mapped. What, what does that look like as far as, as collaborating with and integrating with the lighting team and then being able to drive lighting content on top of their fixtures or video content on top of lighting fixtures. Yeah. And then actually the, the pixel tape, you can kind of see the skinny pixel tape. It's all map. Too. But um, okay. it, I think we're all, we're all just the same team, you know, um, we have lighting focus and video focus, but ultimately we're all the, you know, the same team. So Griffin is, you know, just as a part of the process as, as I am, you know, with a new set design. So, um, I think we, you know, the, the one that we're doing in the in the fall, I think in a, uh, last week of September, um, it's more kind of lighting focused. We kind of go between like the one we have now, there's 430, I think, uh, panels in the air. I think we're going down to like 300 and a little over 300 for the next design. So Brian and Griffin, you know, Brian works with Griffin the same way he works with me with a video and we just kind of all work together, you know. Um, awesome. well, as far as a load in goes, like I'm, I'm helping with lighting as much as I'm helping video, you know, we just, whatever makes sense, we just build it all together, you know, especially a lot of stuff hangs on the same trust, you know, so sure, we just, sure. we look at it as one team. That's awesome. You know, yeah, we for those focuses, people. But I mean, you know, Griffin's hanging LED panels and then I'm in a lift with him helping vipers, you know, so nice. we're all ultimately on the same team. Obviously, Griffin knows a heck of a lot more about lighting than I do. Um, but yeah, we just we work on it together. That's awesome. It, kind of, it, it starts out as a big group of people to like tear the wall down and then a big group of people to redo all the rigging. And then when we start putting it up, the group kind of dwindles because we would rather, you know, put it up slowly and do it one time than have a bunch of people like slinging LED panels in. And we've just found that it's just like it's just kind of it ends up being the like small core of us. It kind of slowly builds everything. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. And we just okay. work as we, you know, as we go. So, like the last uh, that one that you just showed, um, there's four small little roofs, and you know the X four bars. Like we did all that, you know, we did all that at the same time. So we we built the LED on the floor, we flew it, and we just went one by one and hung all the X four bars and a lot of the rigging. We just kind of figured out as we went, you know. Sure. Yeah, that's that's. But I mean, cool. ultimately, we're all the same team, you know. Right, right. So um, for those of you who are watching uh, both live and even on the replay, we talked about this fall, their set's going to be flipping. Uh, Highlands Production on Instagram. Yeah, check us out. We'll, we'll keep it up, dude. And you'll be able to watch the the watch the rip down and the rebuild happen right there, which would be super One great. thing that uh, we've done this fall that we haven't done, we basically have like multiple phases. So normally we would, um, you know, build something for the our women's conference. And then we would build something for Christmas. But this year we're, we're at it. We're like, there's like three phases to it. So what we, what we introduced originally will just be for Sunday. And then uh, about a month later is the, our women's conference. We're going to add some stuff. So it's kind of something new that we're, we're doing this fall. Awesome. Cool. So let's, let's I want to rewind to something you said earlier about how important it is for the wall to look good on camera because you have such a right. huge online reach and you've got you know, all the campuses watch pastor Chris, you know, on, right. on video there. So let's talk about cameras and led walls and how they play nice together or sometimes don't play nice together. Right. Um, what's what, what were the key factors that you guys were looking at when you were doing all of your demos back in fall of 16? What, what were you looking for specifically when you were going through that process? I mean, I think the number one thing everyone looks at is just the moray, which, you know, may or may not be easy to overcome depending on the environment, you know? Um, so, so we looked at that, which, 
you know, uh, we're not, we're in an awesome situation with our, with the combination of our front light, our lensing, it's all been mathematically calculated to be really ideal. Um, but um, one of the things I was like, you know, the, we would always put a full white, something white up and just fade it to black slowly. So I put it literally like a full screen white in presenter, like a 30 second dissolve to black and just watch it. And that, well, that just, what are you, what are you looking for during that? Just to like how, how the led fades from 100% on to 100% off and how, you know, you can, just, it, it, they'll all fall, you know, the cheap stuff falls apart in that. And then the grays, um, just, yeah, I mean, we, we were just trying to make stuff accurate, you know? So, um, I know I'm in a lot of the church Facebook pages and I've seen people say, you know, buy your, buy your second led off first. Right. Yeah. You know, and we, we just really, we, 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 we wanted, we wanted to do it right. You know, and we spent a lot of time, you know, we even like everyone loved red. Um, like it, it, it was, it was, there was really no second place mm-hmm. in the mix. It was a big gap. But yeah. what we did is we, every single time we had a, um, a demo in, we recorded, you know, some, we, we recorded the same guy, Steven, who's our director. We recorded him on camera and um, just stand on stage walking around. And we did tons of blind tests. And it's crazy to see that the difference in like accurate, like we, we use the same background for all of them. Just, we just did blind tests of like, Hey, here's a and B, a and B, a and B. And we had like, 15 or 18, I think total. And it was just like, yep, that's it. There's row, there's row, there's row, you know, and it just, that's it awesome. seemed to be across the board, um, the most accurate. And then one of the things we want to do is Brompton processing, which is a luxury. I understand there's probably real on staging guys out there making fun of me, but it's, it's awesome. I mean, the color accuracy across the board is amazing. Um, the use usability of it is amazing. Um, it's, so, so that that was a thing for us too. Was was Brompton? So the the, the Brompton processor to actually drive the yeah. wall. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. So right. and that kind of narrowed us down too, to an extent. Um, but it, it's so user friendly. Like I could have a volunteer, you know, who was covering something, call me, and I'd be like, oh, you see that? Or, it's just so user friendly, you know. And then it, it provides us a lot of creative freedom with um, rotation. And the Nova Star stuff is there's a smaller gap now than ever, probably. Uh, but at the time, four years ago, the, there was a huge gap between the two, you know. And I think for us, we service, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Row Ro is great. They're a great team of folks. We've lo- we love, yeah. we love getting to partner with them. Uh, we, we've got a great right. relationship with those guys and have really, really enjoyed it for sure. So, and like I said, I, I don't, I, you know, a lot of people are like, Hey, what do you buy? We want to buy the same thing. And it may or may not work for everybody, you know, and I want to always try to be clear with that, that, um, it, it may or may not be the best product for you, you know? Yeah, no. Um, you know, uh, one thing that you, one thing that you said kind of uh, rang a bell a little bit, and that was, you know, when you were looking through the camera lens, right? Uh, you were watching it go from a hundred percent intensity all the way down to zero, um, or hundred percent on to a hundred percent off. And, you know, one of the, one of the things you said is you were just looking to see what felt natural. And right. that's the whole, that's the whole point of finding the right tool for the job, right? It's not just, sure. I've got an LED wall now, just throw it up there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, 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 you know, for, for, uh, you know, for, for churches who, who have some sort of, you know, like donation or, or, you know, another campus donates their LED wall to them and they don't really have a say in it. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll get, I, you know, I'll get talked to a, a lot and it's like, I know you're going to judge me. And I'm like, I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> like, like no, it, 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 did you spend 300,000 on it? Because then that's a different story. But if you, if it right. was donated, right, like that's a different, it's a different story. And I think that you should, you should, you should be able to utilize the tools that, that you're given. Right. Uh, um, absolutely. For but us, it was just, we yeah. felt like it was our time. Like we, we, you know, leadership, you know, everyone above us was, was, was ready to pull the, pull the trigger. And we just wanted to do our due diligence at the time to present to them, Hey, we think this is the absolute best thing that we can buy. Yep. And then we had, we had like, I think we did like three total. So it was like, this is what we think is the best on camera across the board, you know, 
money not considered. We like this one a lot, but here's our reservations. And then, so I think we did the top three. We did the same thing when we bought our cameras, you know, so we presented to them and let them kind of decide. Right. So, you know, we did the homework. We think, Hey, if we, you know, if the money is, is, is there, or, you know, the vision is there, um, this is what we think is the absolute best, you know? Um, yeah. So, you know, we were so thankful because then we, we basically a couple of weeks later heard, Hey, you know, this is what we're going with. And we're like, Oh, awesome. You know, but we would have been happy with any of it, you know, and just as many people would have gotten saved either way. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Right. Would the process have been harder to set it up? Maybe sure. But you know, but we were thankful that, you know, we got to get row, but it wasn't like a, we have to have row, you know, we just right. basically collected all the data did our due diligence to say, you know, this is the best that we think is available right now. And, um, you know, leadership helped us, you know, decide that because I don't know the, you know, the cash flow of the, the church, you know, and, but I do know how to look at LEDs, but, you know, we just partner with that and, you know, yeah, we did the same ultimately we're trying to the same cameras, you know, um, yeah. we were like, Hey, you know, we can buy, you know, we could buy six of this brand or four of this brand, but we really, this brand really looks the best, you know? And then here's we had everybody that works in production do blind tests and they all picked this brand, but you know, this brand, just as many people are going to get saved, you know? For sure. So for sure. But when yeah, it breaks, this brand, we know who to call and this brand, we may or may not know who to call, you know? So. Right. Yeah, I think it, it ultimately boils down to, to to finding the right tool for the job, right? And and honestly, too, it, it comes down to finding you know finding a manufacturer who has good good service and support in the United yeah. States. Um, but also, too, like we're putting we're putting an LED wall on the stage to just add to the dynamic of what's already happening on the stage, not to take away from it, not to, yeah. not to take away from, not to do anything like that. And so sometimes what we've seen uh, by doing this over and over and over and over again, is that sometimes when you, um, when you don't find that right tool, that LED wall could cause more of a distraction than it does add value to the, to the worship experience. Right. right. And so and that's, and that's, that's big for us. You know, it's, it's huge. Yeah. So, yep. it, we're we're yep. like that with Hayes. Like we, like our leadership understands that like, you know, we have an awesome lighting rig and then with that, with, without Hayes, it's pretty much pointless. Yeah. Right. Yep. But when yep. the Hayes gets to the point where it's like, I'm noticing the Hayes is like when it's too much, you know? So it's like yep. a balance that we really are conscious of. Same reason, like we have n under no circumstance will you ever see a handheld camera operator on any of our stages. Sure. And it's just from our our vision is that the the only thing that those guys can do is distract the worship environment, you know. And yep. um, that's just you know it's part of our vision. Um, same with the LED. You know, we the last thing that I want is for a random panel to start stripping green. You know. Yep. Yep. So, and Again, that's... that comes to the, the distraction perspective, right? Like, right. well, what are we going to, you know, what's usually when we're talking about LED walls, right? We take, we take like budget off the table. What's the dream and why, right? right? So here's, here's, here's why we're talking about it. You say you want an LED wall. If it's because someone else has it, then we're going to have another discussion, right? First. Right. Um, if it's because here's what we want to do, we have, you know, we have a lot of things going on. We want to be able to reconfigure. Not only can it be a 16 by nine led wall TV, but it can also be columns and different designs and cool things to do with it. Right. And so, okay, cool. We're getting into a discussion of why to, why to pick a, a particular product or, or, um, you know, a, a solution, um, right. Or not a solution, but a tool. Right. Um, so here's how to, you know, here's how we're having that conversation. But as soon as we kind of start to talk about the, the pull in, I've got to have it just because I've got to have it. That's, that's kind of the wrong approach, right? We want to have it to use as a tool to, to really just like push out what's already happening and right. not to mention serve as a long-term ROI, right? Like no one wants right. to I mean, change out LED walls every three years, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, we're I anybody four years in now with no, I mean, no side of like, there's no conversation of, hey, what's next, you know? So right, yeah, yeah. I mean that, but that's also 
that investment that you guys made to do it, that's a big reason for that, I'm, right. I'm assuming, right? So that, that helps I mean, in, in that conversation. Another thing, I mean, none, I mean, we didn't pay to have it integrated for the record. I mean, we, you know, I mean, we're all capable techs, right? But I mean, none yeah. of us had ever really done much LED, right? So it was kind of a fun process to like, you know, sh containers show up in the parking lot and Sunday night we take our like <laughs> our mod scene set down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Couple but containers. It, yeah. 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 So, I yeah, remember seeing that picture. I think there was like 790 road cases. Not really, but yeah, um, it's awesome. We actually still don't have storage. Like we we don't have storage enough square footage for the cases. So we will just long term rent a semi. Oh, really? So, yeah. So like a semi is full of cases for Ellie because we have a warehouse, but there's so many row accessory cases and rigging trunks, and so it's right. like it's a full semi double stacked and um, we pay for uh, we, we, we lease the trailer and then we pay a flat fee for them to move it to our dock. So like that Sunday night when we do a set change, we pay them to drop the, the truck, the trailer on our dock. We do everything on um, Thursday afternoon. we reload the trailer and they take it. That's legit. That's yeah. legit. It's awesome it's in the good. summer when we're like, wow, we really need a case and we go to this, it's stored and it's, 400 degrees we're digging, <laughs> we're digging through it trying to like find some stuff you know yeah for those yeah. of you watching it they are in birmingham alabama where summers yeah. are they're serious about yeah. summer down there they do it right so <laughs> like, uh, like, like a motion conference we're doing this b stage and we need a couple led panels for the like this little desk that we're doing so somebody's going to get to go over there where the truck is stored and dig out a case and put it in a you know I, I just say that to say, I think a lot of people, you know, think that we just snap our fingers and, you know, it's, it's just there. Right. You know, but like we, it's not as easy. Like the other, we, we did a video shoot on, in front of LED for our, our summer blast stu, uh, kit conference. Uh, it was basically VBS. We got summer blast and we were, we had to do it all on Edison and it was like a, it was a lot of eighty panels to do on Edison. I have a photo. We took a water. We were taking water fountains apart in the in the the student and the kids spaces to find Edison circuits to power it. Wow! <laughs> so it's, like, it's it's not quite you know we don't quite it's not quite as easy sometimes as it may look on Instagram. You know, sure. you, you got to got to do what you got to do to get the get the yeah. gig done. Well, right? We need we need to start putting that and then digging through the two hundred degree trailer to find stuff on Instagram too, you know, it's like the, it's the <laughs> highlight. That's real. That's real life. Yeah. That's real life. That's stuff, real right? life. So but I have a photo of Jeremiah, one of our team members taking a water fountain apart to figure out how to use the circuit to power stuff. So, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> so Adam, I've got one more question for you, man, uh, that I would right. love for you to share with everybody. Um, well, I, I see folks in the chat here and I see a lot of names that, that we all know who are all part of the E2I family here. But um, there are some folks here as well that I know do not ha currently have an LED wall or they're thinking yeah. about making the move to LED. So let's say somebody's here live with us or even watching on the replay later on and they're wanting to look at get started and getting started in the LED world. What would be your, Adam Hobson's top five things to look at and consider when making a decision to make that move. Okay. I'm trying to think. Okay. So I think uh, this is, uh, you didn't prep me for this. So this is legit to everybody's watching. This is, this is uh, batter's box. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think for number one for us would just be a relationship. You know, when it, when it breaks, who do I call? And um, is it, so let's, let's use you an example. So like if I buy it from you, like am I calling you? Like who do I call when it breaks? Because at some point, like somebody's going to run into it with a scissor lift. A band member is going to knock a guitar over. Like it's going to break. There's millions of, you're buying millions of lights and they're, they're going to break at some point. So I would think relationship is probably for me. It was number one. Um, for us, you know, that's, you know, either you guys or uh, directly with Roe, you know, it's been fantastic. So, um, so relationship. So for instance, it's like who you buy it from, you know, is it a direct box sale? Is it an integrate situation? Um, and then 
Is it a processing thing? Is it a LED thing? There's just a lot of relationships in the process. I think I would just try to make sure I felt good with that, you know, because we've had an issue before. I called Row and like, oh, that's a Brompton thing. So I called Brompton and it's kind of some finger pointing, you know, because they're like, they're different, but they're the same, you know? So um, I would just, you know, be, I feel good about the, the relationship, I guess is number one. And then uh, I would say, well, you know, what's the vision would be, I guess, number two. So for us it was on camera performance um, and w- which that meant, you know, we didn't want the beret. We wanted color accuracy really low. So like we run our wall like 22 or 23%. Um, so a lot of the cheaper products just fall apart when they're, you know, 100% brightness. Sure, they're great, but 100% brightness on camera is white. There's no, basically no color translates. Um, so, you know, whatever the vision is, 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 if, is it a wall that's going to be out in a lobby space that can be 100% brightness that never on camera? Do you need row? Maybe not, you know. So I would just figure out what's the vision for it. Um, and for us, it was just 100% color accuracy, on-screen performance for cameras. Um, so, you know, I would, I would say that. And then uh, another thing I would consider is the storage. Like, can you actually store, like, for us, we have 56, 58 cases for just panels. So, you know, you need to decide, like, hey, is this going to be permanent? Is it going to be portable? Um, and if it's if it's portable, like, do I have the storage to put this thing because it needs to come down and be in cases. And for us, that's a full semi. Um, do you have the means to, you know, to do that? You know, um, it, if it's a permanent install, sure, it's fine. Right. You, you, they ship it in, you know, wooden boxes and that's the end of it, you know? Yeah, sure. It's funny you mentioned the cases because I actually just found a picture oh, of the awesome. cases here. Yeah, that's, that's down. <laughs> and that's, that's down one aisle in the main, the main room there. Grant's yeah. Middle. We, we, we have this like it's like a funny so they come the deads come off the semi and we got them on the stage we fill them then they roll down the ramp and go around the auditorium and basically <laughs> fill all the out. aisles in the auditorium and then once we start rebuilding we push them backstage left back on pull panels out and they go back to the semi so um, we just at Highland, we just we don't have much storage, you know. And so that part of that was, you know, we want to build the building um, debt free. And part of that is that, you know, we don't really build a lot of storage. So part of that is a, you know, a fun fun for us sometimes, you know. So, um, but yeah, that's a uh, that's a thing. So a storage and then power for one, I would I would say, you know, every the stereotype is LED doesn't use power. Um, but when you have millions of them, it can add up pretty quick. We have ours on a 400 amp disconnect. Um, so yeah, the, the in, I would say power and infrastructure, right? So it's like, you know, I see people. Unfortunately, I get emails from time to time that were like, "Hey, we were at Grow Conference. Uh, we saw that um, you put live video on the LED walls of PIP. Like, do you do that in Resolume? That's like we get that all the time, you know." Because people came to grow and they saw that when we played back the news, we pipped it and all that. And that's where I have to say, hey, you know, Resolute doesn't handle our video very well. You know, PVP kind of handles it better, but we have a spider. And then like, what's a spider? And then they look up how much a spider costs. So like what, what, what I'm, we're, I'm so thankful for is that we didn't just buy 450 LED panels. Like, you know, we were blessed and I'm so thankful that we actually, you know, really got the infrastructure that it took to really um, from, from beginning to end. So media servers to the spider um, to the actual panels. Cause I think a lot of people just think panels, you know? So um, we were so thankful and so blessed to be able to really imagine, like really dream, you know? And part of that was the spider, which is kind of the, the piece that's not very pretty and no one ever sees it. Um, until I get those emails where it's like, hey, we want to do pips. And then, for the, you know, they have 300 panels that's hooked HDMI out of their, you know, computer. And, and the infrastructure really isn't there, you know. Sure. Or people that's buy a really it, good point. Spend, you know, $75,000 out of pocket to get power for it. And they're trying to plug it into Edison. I would just think, like, overall infrastructure is just to try to think through on that and if you don't know it just ask somebody right like you guys know what you're doing and if you don't use e2i or you, you know whoever you use i would just you know really seek out help for the backbone of the infrastructure of it you know 
Yep. As you're going through the okay. budgeting process, all that support gear is so yeah, important to have to give sure. you the ability to, to do what you need to do. The, Correct. Yeah, I mean, it's so yeah. important, you know, to be able to do what we do. It's not like Resolume HDMI into a processor. I mean, we have, when we first bought it, we had 12 1080 processors to kind of do it all. And it was a nightmare. But now that, now Brompton has the 4K stuff that makes it all, you know, way easier. Sure. Um, but yeah, I would just think through infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. And then I guess another thing would just be if you go portable, not permanent like us, just really try to think outside the box for hardware, right? So like we have way more, like right now, this set has a ton of ground support in it and um, not very, we're using very few hanging bars. So cause like a lot of it's bolted straight to the roof and a lot of that's ground supported. So like right now on, on our trailer, we have a ton of header bars and we're using a ton of footers um, because all that ceiling didn't need header bars because it's bolted straight to the truss. And then a lot of that's ground supported. So I would just try to, I know it's literally impossible and we sat and went round and round. How much do we need? Right. Because for us, it's like, it's hard to spend X amount of money on this project and then go back like three months later and be like, Hey, we didn't buy enough header bars or enough footer bars. So we really, really try to think through creatively. Like my stage is 60 feet wide. What if I wanted to do a ground support rig 60 feet and I wanted to, you know, fly in a 60 foot wall, you know, over it. Or I would just really try to think through that stuff, you know, because that, you know, a couple hundred dollars for a header bar doesn't seem like a lot until you need like 40 of them. And then, you know, sure. And along with that, I would, I would say, um, selling, you know, so like power and data and it's really hard to kind of, to know what you need. If it's a permanent install, sure. It's easy, right? You know exactly how many headers, how many footers. Um, but if you go portable, you know, just thinking through the infrastructure, I guess that helps. Yeah. And I think, I think one of the good things, one of the cool things about your guys' setup is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is the way I sort of imagine your guys' space. Um, it's like a portable permanent install, right? right? Like it is a, it's a permanent install, but I don't know if there's not much that you can't do in the room except for add too many panels wide, right? I mean, right. like you've, you've obviously got your load limits. You've got your, you know, your, your capacities in that regard and things like this, but, but at the end of the day, you've got it set up and, and uh, you know, the way that we kind of help design this system is like we, we came up with a way that whatever you guys want to do, you can be like a yes and right answer. Right. You can say, yeah, and we can do this. Yeah, and we can do that. Yeah, and we can do that. It's not like a, yeah, but we're going to need to get this, that, and the other thing, right? Because you thought about that that infrastructure side of things. You thought about the structure side of things. And right. there's always going to be, you know, I work with a lot of ministries who are using LED walls. Um, and you know, there's always going to be something, right? Hey, we've got this crazy out of the box design. I just had one in Louisiana last Christmas where they wanted to, you know, do a bunch of, um, riser like, uh, outlines and things like that to where, okay, we're going to need to get some, some more accessories. We're going to have to get, you know, some, sure. some, some new things shipped in, but that's okay because it's, you know, a few hundred bucks or it's a thousand bucks right. or whatever it is, but it's going to, it's going to stay there for a while and be able to do that. But I really like the spot to where you said like, what's driving it, right? Because oftentimes the, the problem is, Hey, what does 60 panels cost me? And then having someone to ask the why, having someone to say, how are you driving it? Having someone to say, are you flying it? Are you ground supporting it? What's going to drive it? You know, what's the power look like? It's so important. I mean, it's, it's, it's hugely important because when they're like, great, I want to get that. Then the questions come in. Right. And like, it's, and then they're like, Oh, I didn't even think about how much power to, like, I have available. After doors open, you need to reboot your computer. It's like, well, what? okay. So now, it's the secondary output of this computer. So I need to reboot it. So like, does everybody see the login screen at this point? Right. <laughs> or do you have a piece, right. of, a piece of equipment in the, in the process? Even at our campuses, we use image pros to try to like, like a uh, spider isn't necessary at our, at our campuses where they're set up. We have image pros in the process and then we use stream decks to store still stores in them. So like worst case scenario, we can like throw a logo up. Right. Sure. Sure. Just, 
is there a thing in the process to like bail you out if you know if you're using a windows computer it crashes or a mac crashes or whatever that's that's awesome man yeah it's so redundancy i mean you said it yourself right. like what what's going to get you out of a pinch um well and sometimes redundancy is just not in the budget you know like we're working on a project now for a campus and like, i just don't think redundancy is in the budget and you know as long as you know our leadership is okay with that um and just everyone knows you know hey we don't have a backup of this thing and you know but but it's just it may or may not be a sacrifice you can make um with right. budget allows because for the most part redundancy is whatever that thing is double it right so it's pretty easy math to know that if you like we don't do redundant processing. So a lot of people do, we don't. And that was just the thing in the beginning is like, we don't want to spend, we don't want to spend double the amount of money on Brompton processors and we don't. So, and, and there's never, it's, we've never had a processor die, which is awesome. But you know, it, it, you just have to have that conversation with your leadership, you know, to say, Hey, this is going to cost a hundred thousand instead of 50,000. Is that worth it? You know, and at right. this point, clearly, right. It hasn't been worth it for us, but there may or may not be a day where we're like, man, that processor died and the LED wall went black. It would have been nice if we had redundancy, you know? Sure, sure, yeah. I, uh, you know, I always, uh, and I said this when when, when Griff and, and everybody uh, joined us, um, uh, what was that, four, four months ago or so, maybe three, four months ago. But, um, you know, when talking about things as it, as it pertains to technology and things like that, I think, one of the things I, I cherish about you guys and admire about you guys is that um, there's always a plan for the dollars spent. It's it's right. it, it's always it's always really thought out, and, and everyone's going to have the the oh shoot, I got to get this thing you know for for this next weekend, or oh we just got asked about this, so we got to get you know the, take that away. But in terms of in terms of the plan and strategy, um, in order to execute you know, what you guys are doing. It takes a really big team. It takes a, uh, you know, it takes the resources, it takes the congregation, it takes the ministry as a whole. Um, but one thing that, in my opinion, really, really, um, I, I just admire about you guys is that your heart's in the right place. Um, you're not throwing and slinging LED walls up there because you think it's the cool thing to do, right? You're just, um, you're putting it up there because it's adding a dynamic element to the worship service. And it's, it's, it's creating uh, an engaging worship experience for everyone that's, that's visiting or looking at it through the lens of a, of a camera or on, the, or on their TV, laptop, yeah. iPhone, iPad, whatever. And so uh, one thing that I, I want to say is like, thank you for being, you know, uh, who you guys are and, and your team being what they are. And I mean, you guys mean so much to us and um, as ministry partners and, and as friends, um, because uh, it, it, you know, doing uh, providing technology is, is one thing using technology is, is one thing. Um, but when we all kind of know that we're meeting in the middle and doing it all for the kingdom, I think that's, that's right. the main thing. Um, and so, uh, I just wanted to say that to you, Adam, uh, that I appreciate, you know, your heart and, and what you guys do and your team, um, because you guys, yeah, you guys mean a ton to us. So, um, I appreciate, it. I appreciate that. Really. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. We're really honored to be a part of this and to get to do what we do. You know, we, we've, you know, we say like, there's a single mother out there that has gave 10% of her income this month, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So we, we want to like, you know, honor that and steer it the best way possible. You know? Yep. So, so we may have paid more in the beginning, but you know, we want this to last for a really long time and, you know, continuing to engage people in worship, you know, so. It's all about, all about great stewardship, Absolutely. right? And then stewarding the resources Absolutely. we have. So, so uh, Adam, if folks want to follow you, Highlands Productions on Instagram or Highlands Production, yep. not Productions plural, Highlands Production yeah, on Instagram is the best spot. Yeah, we've really tried. We've really got a lot of engagement lately on that. So the teams are working hard to try to, you know, provide more of what people want to see. So awesome, very cool. Well, man, Adam, thanks so much. Uh, thanks for all Absolutely that great honor. info and, and inspiration. And we love seeing what you guys are doing. We really love getting to getting to be a part of, you know, supporting the, the ministry there at, at Highlands, uh, the, the way that we get to do here. So, um, so I'm going to plug our socials now uh, for everybody watching. You can follow us on at E2I Design on all of our socials, uh, Insta, Facebook, all of those places, YouTube. 
uh, you'll find us on all of those. Um, and uh, if you have a question, uh, if there's anything that has you know, spurred a, spurred a question for you uh, from today's live stream, or even if you're watching on the replay, feel free to drop us an email at hello at e2idesign.com. And we will make sure that we have somebody get back to you. So, um, man, this has been a great hour, gents. I've really enjoyed this. This has been awesome. Uh, Adam, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, oh, we, Thank you so much. we will be back on September 14th for the next edition of Behind the Production. Have a great day.